Challenger Scat Pack. All right, we're going to start with the seat already out of the car. Uh, taking it out is not difficult, but except for you do need one of these uh, E-Torx, and it is a E-Torx number 12, an E-12, and there's just four bolts uh, to bring the seat to get it out of the car and you want to put it on your table and to get all the skin off uh, by skin I mean all this material uh, I'm gonna need these tools right here I have a little puller uh, then I'm gonna need one of these to get in there and try and get the material off that's clipped in this is helpful when I'm putting the material on I'm gonna need to cut the material uh, the new material to make holes that don't exist and then uh, this T15 to get into uh, some of the screws to take some of these panels off that are on the side but i'll show you guys uh how to do that if anybody's interested in uh, the difficulty level of removing this material and then putting on the new material so i'll show you all the steps all right to get the back off you're going to want to just put your hands on the sides and pull down just a little bit and give it a squeeze there's two tabs on the side a couple on the top and then underneath there's a strap that runs underneath the seat you just want to unclip that and then it comes right off pretty easy now for the seat latch there's a t15 screw just take that off and then grab the sides of it it's going to feel like it's not going to come out like it's kind of uh, uh like you're missing something but you're not it's just kind of hard to get off so just give it a good yank and it'll come out and uh it's not a not a problem okay then you're going to want to take off the two side covers now for the left side on the driver's seat anyway where there is the uh, puller kind of push on that plastic and you can look in there and you can see a little cotter pin that cotter pin is what's going to be holding the lever in place so reach in there with your little hook tool like i've got pull that cotter pin out and then the uh, lever just pops right off nothing else is holding it except for that now once you have the lever off there's nothing else holding it on except for the two screws and there's gonna be some uh, clips once you take it off. So take the screw off of the side, then there's one on the back, uh, like you can see here by the mount, and take the two T15 screws off, and then it just kind of pops off like regular. Uh, there are a couple of little uh, clips holding it, but you can just pull those out, and then you gotta undo the uh, power modules by uh, just pushing in the tabs, and on the front one, you just wanna squeeze the side and uh, remove that and then once you get those undone that entire thing is off then you can turn the seat around and there's another cover on the other side and that's just got two t15 screws just like the other side one on the side and one on the bottom really easy and next i moved on to the headrest and uh, this works like any other headrest you've ever had just push the little side buttons there's a big button and there's a small button on the other side push those and pull it out then these you can grab them and they just come right out uh, on their own there's nothing there's nothing but tension holding them in and then you can take the two posts out then on the back uh, is secured by these little clips and they pop off uh, relatively easily you can get those done and then the backs exposed um, then right below that there's going to be two little uh, uh, pull tabs so use your little puller and pull those tabs out and that's uh releasing uh little edges of the upholstery that's going to be poking through after you do the pull tabs there's one final clip right there at the bottom uh that secures that uh cushion on then you're pretty much open on the back side right there and then you can start um unplugging everything there's several plugs uh, that you need to take off and uh, I removed this one from the uh, mouth so I can unplug it and then there's some more wires running through here and they're pretty self-explanatory if you just kind of look and see where they go you can unplug those uh, from the bottom of the chair that way you can work them out through that uh, hole right there and be able to get your upholstery off
And once you get all the wires unplugged and unwrapped, then you can just work them through that little hole until finally you're left with uh, uh, just an empty hole right there because that way you can be able to get the upholstery and tuck it back up in between the seat so you'll be able to grab it from the other side when you go to pull it off. So then you can pick the seat back upright and there's gonna be two more little uh, push tabs. You can do uh, one on each side, just holding these uh, little bitty flaps of upholstery down uh, that helps keep the uh, seat upholstery tight. Uh, so pull those out and set them aside. Make sure you save them because you'll be using them again. Then you wanna just start to slowly uh, peel your uh, upholstery back around the seat so you can get to these little clips. Because at this point, the only thing left holding it in is these orange clips. And uh, I'm not going to lie, they're a huge pain in the butt. But I figured out an easy way to uh, get them off, or easier way, is to use this little tool right here. And then once you get to just the last set, it'll slide right off because nothing else is holding it. But it's kind of an H pattern. So you uh, undo that H pattern, and then you've got the upholstery completely off. And I started with the top, then moved on to the bottom. And the bottom has these two little strings that help keep the tension on the front. You're not gonna need those anymore. So you can cut the strings off, uh, one on each side, because the new cover is gonna have a clip. Unless you have a different cover than I got, I went with the cat skins. But the cat skins have a uh, plastic clip that you'll use. So once you get that string free, then it breaks the uh, tension and the front, you can peel it back, or the bottom, you can peel it back just like you did the top and then you're left with just nothing but the clips. So use your little tool to get in there and undo the clips. And what I did, I would stick that clip right up underneath and then give it a twist and then it would spread it just enough where I could get it out. Then flip it over, flip the chair over and you got these clips on the bottom and that's what's holding that flap in right there. And then you can kind of pull on it and you wanna to get to the point where there's nothing else. There's a little bitty strip of Velcro holding it right there but you wanna get it where there's nothing else holding it except for those clips. So once you do the clips and then you get the cross part, you can just slide it out just like I did the other side. Then you get your new upholstery and go ahead and lay it on kinda of how you want it. Make sure it's even and then start with that uh, middle cross piece right there. And then you're gonna work your way uh, front and back from that on the little clips, just clipping it back in. And clipping it back in is a ton easier then unclipping it for sure. Now this part's a little tricky. Uh, I took my upholstery back in and then you have to try and clip in um, that bottom part right here. And I noticed that the part that I was trying to uh, hold the clip in, it kept twisting. So that's why I used those long pliers just to help uh, guide it. And then I could push it in with my fingers and make it clip, but it would keep it even because uh, it kept trying to go uh, sideways on me and that made it a huge pain in the butt but once i figured that technique out uh, it went a lot easier so after you get all of the uh, clips back everything clipped back in nice and tight in the middle then just kind of work your uh, upholstery back around and kind of wrap it around work with it a little bit make sure your foam's uh, good in there and tucked where you want it and then uh, you've got it set where you need to go now this is the part that i pulled through and what you need to do here is I poked about three holes in there and then went and used my uh, high strength zip ties to zip tie because there's no clip on this like there was on the factory ones. So you put the three zip ties on there and zip them up and that becomes your new clip and that's gonna hold uh, just fine, no problems. And if you're doing good so far, this is the part where you're gonna start to get nervous because you're gonna have to cut some holes for the headrest. So I ended up putting these posts in there temporarily. You're gonna have to remove them later but I put them in there temporarily so I could have a better feel of where to cut these holes. So once I put the posts in, I tuck the seat down where it's gonna end up being is, uh, and I didn't install anything, but I put it where it's gonna be so I could feel exactly where those holes are gonna wanna line up. And you can see where I'm pushing down here. And with those um, back in there, you can feel very easily where the hole is instead of having to push down really far and try and find the metal rods. Uh, coming out. So then I cut me just a little bitty uh, guide hole so I had nowhere to start to uh, put the two holes and then I pulled the cover off and uh, made them a little bit bigger uh, to fit what I needed to fit. And uh, the inside, the outside part where the leather is is real easy to cut. The inside part right here 
you're gonna wanna trim it just a little bit so it'll go back on there. And then I took the posts back out because I don't need them in there uh, underneath because they're gonna have to fit through the leather. But once I got the holes cut where I wanted, then I laid the seat back on and put the posts back in there and everything turned out no problem. It is scary, but uh, you can get through it. Then as a guide, I put the old cover back on because I had to cut a much, much bigger hole for the pull latch. And I felt better by just putting the old seat cover on and then drawing me a little hole just smaller than uh, the factory hole. That way I could go ahead and cut around it, put it, get it exactly where I wanted it. And then I went back and uh, trimmed it just a little bit by a little bit just to make sure. It's always better to start out smaller than bigger. But that part, uh, like I said, is scarier than it looks. Then you're ready to start um, putting it back in the clips. And this is kind of difficult to put the top part on with the clips because it's really hard to reach uh, up there. I started to get a hand cramp at this point. But the concept is easy. Just put the little plastic tabs in the clips. And uh, then just like you did on the bottom, start tucking it through and uh, so it'll come through the back and uh, your seat will start to get tighter. So once you got the uh, back through, then you can grab it and give it a good yank and uh, get it nice and tight on there. And then just start putting it back together. You have the same hole that you had, it's already pre-cut and you can run your wires back exactly how they were before and uh, get them all tucked back in there how you like them. Get all your plugs plugged back in. That way you don't forget. And uh, clip them back where they go. Put your push pin back in there and clip it back to the seat frame. And then plug all your other plugs back in uh, from the bottom of the chair. And you basically got this whole, uh, all the mechanics part at least, all the electrical stuff all back together. You won't have to worry about that anymore. Then on the back of the top part, you can start putting these clips back on and they uh, just easily fold over and clip to the metal frame. And it pulls the seat nice and tight, so you may have to give it a little tug, but uh, I went and put mine out in the sun and uh, let the sun heat it up a little bit so it could tighten up and get a little stretchy. And then in the meanwhile, I figured I'd work on the headrest. And the headrest has these little clips on the bottom. You just pop those off and uh, pull them off the rod. And those two clips are what's going to hold on the uh, little seat belt retention thing. So you pull that off and then uh, there's a little clip that holds uh, the front to the back and you can just easily pull the, uh, un uh, disconnect that from itself and then just peel it off. And uh, it's on there pretty tight. That little plastic bag that's in there kind of helps it um, to where you can pull it off and then put the new cover on. So don't take that little plastic off of the headrest you're going to want that on there because it's going to help you put the uh, leather back on otherwise you'd have a heck of a time trying to slide it across that foam but the uh, top goes on pretty easily and then at the bottom you just uh, fold the flaps over and uh, put the clip back on and it, and it uh, attaches together really nice and looks really clean Now, it may take a little bit of stretching to get that clip to attach to itself because it folds over uh, for a really clean, like no clip look, uh, but you have to stretch it a little bit. But then once I did that, uh, I was good to go. And then I put the little seat belt uh, holder back on, put the clips back on, and then I reattached it back to the chair and let it uh, heat up in the sun a little bit just to tighten up that uh, leather because uh, once you get it in the in the sun for a while it uh, tightens up real nice and looks beautiful just like from the factory now after I let the leather get warm and it was just a little bit uh, more pliable then you want to bring it back inside and you can fold over this bottom part this is kind of a pain in the butt for real because the plastic piece goes along the entire front and sides and you have to fold it over to make the leather real tight and then it holds uh, and clips against the lip of the metal frame. And it takes a little bit of uh, playing around to get that on there. It's actually, it was not very easy to do. 
Um, but, you know, with a little resilience and a little bit of uh, ambition, you can get it on there. But uh, that was one of the hardest parts is just getting that on there. But you want it on there nice and tight. That's the whole purpose of it is uh, when it clips on there, it gives you that nice snug feel and it ends up looking fantastic after that. And don't worry too much about these wrinkles like I've got uh, showing right here because after you get the entire seat back together, just let it out in the sun for a couple hours and it'll look great. Uh, but now that I had it out there for just a little bit anyway, let it warm up and stretch, I can pull this uh, final clip right there where all these wires are and tuck that in. And then of course you see I still have those two flaps. I'm gonna wanna pull those down and cut some holes in them so I can use my push pins and uh, push those, put those push pins back in there and secure the two flaps where they need to go. And after you get the two push pins in there, there's two clips on this little uh, flap that's still hanging from the bottom. And just clip those into those two holes right there and those go in pretty easily. And then there's gonna be another uh, little flap here that has uh, a little clip on the end just to, uh, I fished that through that little mounting hole right there and then uh, ended up clipping it back to the frame where it goes, so. Uh, not very uh, hard to put on there, but that gives it some more uh, tension on the on the seat cover. Then you're going to want to cut your hole here for your uh, pull lever. And this part's not nearly as scary because uh, it's not the leather part and it's going to be covered anyway. So this is no big deal. But just cut your uh, piece big enough and you can see right there where it needs to be cut when you're doing it because it has to cover up the uh, uh, lever. And uh, then you have another little flap on each side that's gonna be hanging down. And just cut a hole in that, put your push pin back in there, and then tuck those back where they go. And that'll help keep that side nice and tight, just like it's supposed to be. And then after your push pins are back in, uh, then you can just clip the other side. Uh, same as you did on the first side, just clip it to the frame and that helps keep a little tension on the leather to keep it nice and tight, just how you want it. But uh, you're almost done at this point. Then you're gonna wanna put your control module piece back on and just clip the uh, plugs back in. And then there's two metal clips that go on that little rod there and you can put that back on, it's pretty easy. Uh, unfortunately, my GoPro battery died when I was finishing up, but when you put this back on, uh, just actually attach the retainer clip to this piece and then just pop it back on there after you put the cover on and then it goes on real easy. You don't have to try and fish it through there. It's, it's uh, not that hard to do. And then put on the other side, uh, the other cover, which is just the two screws you took off earlier. And then you're to the last piece, which is the back. So put the back on and just kind of pop it into place and those clips will go. And there's a strap on the bottom that you have to put back. And so flip the seat over and just uh, make sure you pull it nice and tight. You can see right there and then it clips on. And then now the back's on, the seat's on and you're good to go. And uh, job complete. Okay. Uh, I've got these out in the sun. Everything's been put together. And I'm gonna let that sun stretch that leather just a little bit. So you can see the passenger side I've had out in the sun longer. It's already starting to look better, especially like right in that area. This has got to tighten up a little bit still because I just did that one. So that's where we're at right now. And then it's just a matter of bolting them back in the car. But they look fantastic. And I am definitely happy with the results. Can you do it yourself? Well, that depends on your uh, personal skills. Is it a pain in the butt? Absolutely, 100%. Does it take forever? Yes, 
does it save you about five six seven eight hundred dollars yes so worth it in my case i would say so yeah uh but anyway that's how you do it